Thank you for joining us. We're going to pick up our studying here today with the book of Jasher. And we left off with Jasher chapter number 14. Uh, people ask me all the time, why are we doing a study on Jasher? Why do we feel like Jasher is very important? Uh, it's because if you take a look at your 66 books, uh, you will find that the book of Jasher is quoted in two spots. We don't really realize this, and a lot of times we don't really too much care ourselves with the fact that at the end of the day, uh, it is mentioned, but it is mentioned in the book of 2 Samuel, it's mentioned in the book of Joshua, it's mentioned in Joshua, it actually says, it, and I quote, is this not written in the book of Jasher? And my problem is, how can we find uh, that it's not important for us to go the extra mile and understand that what you may have been taught your whole life, there's might have been some holes that they have left out. Why? Because why can't, I mean, if you have a half of a brain, you went through first grade. If you're a two-year-old, you can understand when it says, is this not written? If it says, is this not written? That means that it was written. And you must understand that in the first edition of the 1611 Bible, which was 1611 years after the Messiah went to Calvary, they got together and decided what to read, to, to allow to be read in the Bible and what not to be allowed to be read in the Bible. And they did it with even the slaves. The slaves were not allowed to read the book of Revelation. So there's been trickery, there's been games, and you have to wake up and smell the coffee. You cannot tell me that it's not important. Why is it not important to you if you claim that you're a follower? How can you say you follow the Messiah, but yet you don't want to know his word in its entirety? In its entirety. I don't preach anything besides the word of the Most High. Everything that comes out of my mouth, you can verify it, you can study it out, you can pick up your phone, you can open up the internet and check out every single thing I tell you. I'm not asking for your offering, so I really don't care if you don't like what I'm saying to you. I don't even have to know who you are. The reality is somebody's got to stand up and for what is right in the last days and somebody's got to be real. He's tired of the games. I don't care about your bishop's title. I don't care about your vestments. I don't care about what man honors you. It's about what does the most high think of you? Is he pleased with your efforts? Are you reaching people and bringing them to him? That's the main thing. But realistically, we've made this thing about a play thing. Well, we are now in chapter 14, and you better believe I'm going to keep bringing it to you guys every day. There's days I don't feel like it. I already read these books. I already know these books, but I'm doing it for the sole benefit of your soul. The reality is I don't need to know this stuff because I already know it. And you should want to know it. Preacher, you should want to know it. Wife, you should want to know it. Husband, you should want to know it. Children, you should want to know it. Why? Because the Most High said, pass the word down. He didn't say pick and choose what to pass down. He said, pass the word down to your children's children forever. So where did somebody feel like we don't have to read this or we don't have to read that? That's a scam. Chapter 14, verse one. In those days, there was in the land of Shinar, a wise man who had understanding 
in all wisdom and of a beautiful appearance, but he was poor and indigent. His name was Rikayan, Rikayan, and he was hard set to support himself. And he resolved to go to Egypt, to Osiris. Osiris is a Greek god. Study it out. Find out why an Egyptian god. That's why you see that they're associating this term Osiris with Egypt. The son of the Anonyms, the Anamites, king of Egypt. So the Anamites were African Hamites that descended from Ham. We went through this in the last studies. So it's very important to know who is who. We're talking about Africans right here. I know that makes you feel bad. I know you don't like it because the Bible deals with race, but the church don't want to deal with it. This is an African king right here. I know they told you you were African-American, but your DNA is going to tell you you're not African-American. To show the king his wisdom, for perhaps he might find grace in his sight, to raise him up and give him maintenance. And Rakan did so. And when Rakan came to Egypt, he asked the inhabitants of Egypt concerning the king and the inhabitants of Egypt told him the custom of the king of Egypt. For it was then the custom of the king of Egypt that he went from his royal palace and was seen abroad only one day in the year. And after that, the king would return to his palace to remain there. And on the day when the king went forth, he passed judgment in the land. And everyone having a suit came before the king that day to obtain his request. And when Rakan heard of the custom in Egypt and that he could not come into the presence of the king, he grieved greatly and was very sorrowful. And in the evening, Rakan went out and found a house in ruins, formerly a bakehouse in Egypt. And he abode there all night in bitterness of soul. And he pinched with hunger and sleep was removed from his eyes. And Rakan considered within himself what he should do in the town until the king made his appearance and how he might maintain himself there. And he rose in the morning and walked about and met in his way those who sold vegetables and various sorts of seed with which they supplied the inhabitants. And Rakan wished to do the same in order to get a maintenance in the city, but he was unacquainted with the custom of the people and he was like a blind man among them. And he went and obtained vegetables to sell them for his support. And the rabble assembled about him and ridiculed him. And he took his vegetables from him and left him nothing. And he rose up from there in bitterness of soul and went sighing to the bakehouse in which he had remained all the night before. And he slept there the second night. And on that night again, he reasoned within himself how he could save himself from starvation. And he devised a scheme how to act. And he rose up in the morning and acted ingenuously and went and hired 30 strong men of the rabble, carrying their war instruments in their hands. And he led them to the top of, e of the Egyptian sculpture and he placed them there. And he came to them saying, thus says the king, strengthen yourselves and be valiant men and let no man be buried here until 200 pieces of silver be given. And then he may be buried. And those men did according to the order of Rakan to the people of, of Egypt the whole of that year. What you find out is Rican then becomes Pharaoh. The Pharaoh that ends up uh, going through it with Moses later. This is the early stages of Pharaoh. And in the eight months time, Rican and his men gathered riches of silver and gold. And Rican took a great quantity of horses and other animals and he hired more men and he gave them horses and they remained with him. And when the year came around at the time the king went forth into the town, that was King Nimrod, King Nimrod, African King Nimrod. 
all the inhabitants up. That's why you can't celebrate Christmas because you guys are sitting here celebrating Christmas thinking that you're celebrating the Savior and you're not realizing that they actually created a holiday and they called it Christmas, but it was to celebrate the uh, birth of baby Nimrod. Study it out. It had nothing to do with the Messiah. They didn't celebrate his birth. Study it out. So the king went forth into town, all the inhabitants of Egypt assembled together to speak to him concerning the work for Cain and his men. And the king went forth on the appointed day and all the Egyptians came before him and cried unto him saying, may the king live forever. What is this thing you do in the town to your servants, not to suffer a dead body to be buried until so much silver and gold be given? Cause, cause that's because we can lied. Was there ever the like unto this done in the whole earth from the days of former Kings? Yea, even from the days of Adam unto this day, that the dead should not be buried only for a set price. We know it to be the custom of Kings to take a yearly tax from the living, but you do not only do this, but from the dead also you exact the tax day by day. King didn't know that he was doing this. Now, O King, we can no more bear this for the whole city is ruined on this account. And do you not know it? When the king heard all that has been spoken, he was very wroth and his anger burned within him at this affair, Nimrod, for he had known nothing of it. And the king, Nimrod, said, who and where is he that dares to do this wicked thing in my land without my command? Surely you will tell me. And they told him all the works of Rakan and his men and the king's anger was aroused and he ordered Rakan and his men to be brought before him. And Rican took about a thousand children, sons and daughters, clothed them in silk and embroidery. He set them upon horses and sent them to, to the king by means of his men. And he also took a great quantity of silver and gold and precious stones and a strong and a beautiful horse as a present for the king, with which he came before the king and bowed down to the earth before him. And the king, his servants and all the inhabitants of Egypt wondered at the works of Rican, and they saw his riches and the present that he had brought to the king. And it greatly pleased the king, and he wondered at it. And when Rican sat before the king, asked him concerning all his works, Rican spoke all his words wisely before the king, his servants, and all the inhabitants of Egypt. And when the king heard the words of Rican and his wisdom, Rican found grace in his sight, and he met with grace and kindness for all the servants of the king and from all the inhabitants of Egypt on account of his wisdom and excellent speeches. And from that time, they loved him exceedingly. Pay attention to who Rikayan is. And then the king answered and said to Rikayan, your name shall no more be called Rikayan, but Pharaoh. But Pharaoh, here's your first picture of Pharaoh that you find later with Moses. His name was Rikayan first. And he was poor, broke, busted, and disgusted until he scammed his way into leadership in Egypt. We just read it. But Pharaoh shall be your name since you did exact a tax from the dead and he called his name Pharaoh. Very important to know this history about who Pharaoh was. And the king and his subjects loved Rican for his wisdom and they consulted with all the inhabitants of Egypt to make him perfect under the king. And all the inhabitants of Egypt and its wise men did so, and it was made a law in Egypt. So then this is when the very first picture of the name Pharaoh came about. They made it into a law that that would be the name therefore afterwards. And they made Rican Pharaoh perfect under Os Osiris, African Osiris king of Egypt. And Rakan Pharaoh governed over Egypt daily, administering justice to the whole city. But Osiris the king would judge the people of the land one day in the year when he went out to make his appearance. So it's actually King Osiris here, not Nimrod that we're talking about here. And Rakan Pharaoh cunningly usurped the government of Egypt and he exacted a tax from all the inhabitants of Egypt. And all the inhabitants of Egypt greatly loved Rican and Pharaoh. They made a decree to call every king that should reign over them and their seed in Egypt, Pharaoh. So everybody after this guy was named Pharaoh that was a king in Egypt. Therefore, all the kings that reigned in Egypt from that time forward were called Pharaoh until this 
day. That concludes our study segment on the book of Jasher, chapter number 14. Please like this video, share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are almost up to 5,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. That is what I'm talking about. The word is getting out. We're not asking for your gift. We're asking for your attention. We're asking for you to get your Bible out and let's study it out together. Forget what your mommy and your daddy told you. Forget what your grandpappy told you. Who cares what anybody said? What it matters is where is your relationship with the Most High. Be blessed on purpose.